It's early October 2016, and we can now summarize the September results for Farsight's Time Cross Project, where our remote viewers used remote viewing in August to predict the major news events of September. Now, so far, this Time Cross Project has been working out great. We have not missed a beat. And we have learned so much about the remote viewing phenomenon since it was initially developed and deployed by the United States military and used for espionage purposes. And this is especially true for this month's results. You see, our Time Cross project uses a new experimental design which no one has ever used before exactly the way we are doing it. And every experimental design produces an outcome that is appropriate for that experimental design. And no one truly knows what will happen with any experiment until you try it, which is why it is called an experiment. So, what did we learn this September? Well, first of all, the results for September are spectacular. Let's start with the easy stuff first, before tackling the hard stuff. Using our automated news analysis method that uses a weighting scheme to identify the most newsworthy events as reported by CNN, The New York Times, and the BBC, there were two dominating news events for the month. The riots in Charlotte, North Carolina, and the war in Syria. Now, two of our remote viewers, Daz Smith and Princess Genet, clearly described the race and police-related violent civil disturbances that occurred in Charlotte, North Carolina, resulting in the declaration of a state of emergency. Now, those results are clear hits. Now, with regard to the war in Syria, Aziz Brown also clearly described wartime activity that related to that war an armed conflict involving airborne attacks on a militarized presence in an urban area that unambiguously fits the description of the conflicts in Syria, including appropriate descriptions of the people involved. But the big change in the Syrian war during the month of September was a major shift into a negotiation stage involving the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and the U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry. In this matter, Dick Algeyer described those negotiations in wonderful detail, mentioning Kerry and Lavrov by name, describing the places involved with the negotiations, noting that the negotiations were done in private, and even that the negotiators were essentially bypassed by others who had their own agendas. Princess Genet also did a session describing one of the meetings, and she too found that the small group was negotiating for their own interests, and not really for the interests of the larger civilian population. Indeed, after the negotiations were concluded with the announcement of a ceasefire, the aggressive wartime activity actually increased as each side tried to take advantage of any slowdown by the other side. The descriptions of some of the buildings drawn by Dick Algeyer and Princess Genet look remarkably like some of the structures used for the negotiations. Now, the hard stuff for the month. In Dick Algeyer's session, he also talked about what clearly sounds like congressional hearings in Washington, D.C. He describes sworn testimony, subpoenaed witnesses, fact-finding, and acrimonious accusations. He even notes that he is having difficulty connecting this to the other stuff in his session, as would be expected for a session describing a single event. Well. What Dick described actually did happen during the month of September. During that month, John Stumpf, the chairman and CEO of Wells Fargo Bank, was grilled in very public and heated congressional hearings about the activities of the bank that went on for years, where employees created approximately two million unauthorized accounts for Wells Fargo customers, costing the customers huge expenses in bank fees. It was a terrible blow for the Wells Fargo Bank, which is one of the largest banks in the United States. 
If there is another economic meltdown in the United States involving financial institutions in the near future, one wonders how Wells Fargo will handle the crisis given its now very weakened state. So that event actually happened, and Dick Algeyer clearly seems to have described it during the correct month. The hard part of the situation is that the Wells Fargo hearings were obviously listed in our news analysis table for the month of September, but they were not as highly weighted as some other events. Now, to give you an idea, across CNN, the New York Times, and the BBC, there were 31 links to headline stories related to the Wells Fargo scandal. But the riots and state of emergency in Charlotte, North Carolina, had 115 links to related news stories. And the war in Syria had 157 links to related stories. Out of the 27 major news events reported in our monitored news venues, the Wells Fargo scandal ranked number six from the top. So what do we make of this? Well, our news analysis process is intended to identify the most important news stories for a given month. And when the remote viewers do their sessions, they are intending to describe the major stories for the following month. We are using this experimental design, hoping to generate a telepathically mediated feedback situation in which the act of reading about the major news stories in one month influences the focus of perception for the remote viewers during the previous month. But it now appears that this process involving our news analysis works great nearly all of the time, but it is not perfect. Remote viewing is not robotic, and remote viewers are not robots who follow orders. They remote view with an intent, and sometimes that intent appears to dominate any formal target selection mechanism. This is what we have confirmed with this month's result. If I am to generalize about September's results, we clearly got hits. But the congressional hearings results that Dick Algeyer got in part of his session appear to correspond with an important news event, but not one that ranked as high as, say, Hillary Clinton's brief collapse after the 9-11 ceremonies in New York City on September 11th. So why did Dick perceive the Wells Fargo hearings rather than something else? Well, he clearly did perceive the negotiation phase of the war in Syria, and that was the highest ranking event for the month. But if I were to speculate, I suspect that Dick may have also been attracted to the Wells Fargo congressional hearings because of his intuitive perception of the importance of that event, something that was not picked up fully by our news analysis process. It could also be that the Wells Fargo scandal will become much more important in the future should there be major upcoming economic challenges. And its overall impact may be weighted by those future events. Such a thing has happened previously in our project. On July 13th, David Cameron resigned as Prime Minister of the UK. That was not the highest ranking news event for July, but it was an important news event that corresponded with the general theme of the month, which was the political turmoil in the streets. And it was clearly described by another remote viewer, Daz Smith, in his session for that month. So it seems that our news analysis process indicates the major news stories for a month, but it does not always, or perhaps fully, determine the focus of perception for our remote viewers in each and every instance. In nearly all cases, the news analysis results do match up with what our remote viewers perceive. But in two instances since we started this project in May 2016, the viewer's intent of perceiving the most important news event of the following month seems to have dominantly determined their focuses of perception. And the bottom line is that our news analysis process does work, but viewer intent also matters in this project, especially with important events that may have long-term implications, which may not be fully reflected in the quantity of news stories that appear in the major news outlets. Remember, this is a public experiment, and we are learning along with everyone else. The Time Cross project is turning out to be hugely successful and tremendously interesting, filled with new surprises each month. 
I hope you continue to watch the monthly results for Farsight's Time Cross Project. And as you know, we are offering our Time Cross Project free to the public as a way of demonstrating the reality and potential of remote viewing. And as a fun way for everyone to follow a scientific experiment. And it does cost us a few thousand dollars each month to do this. So for us to continue, we need your help by watching our Mysteries Projects. It is the only thing that pays the bills. Go to our website to see information about those projects, projects that include remote viewing investigations into the 9-11 events, the assassinations of John F. Kennedy and Martin Luther King, the psychology of Adolf Hitler, and some amazing explorations into UFOs and extraterrestrial life. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channels. We have two YouTube channels, one for the science stuff, such as our Time Cross Project, which is the Farsight Press channel, and the other for our Farsight Vlog videos, which is the Farsight Prime channel that has all sorts of behind-the-scenes content as well as information about what we are doing next. The two YouTube channels have related but separate unique content. So, please remember to subscribe to both of our YouTube channels if you want to closely follow our activities. Stay ahead of the curve. Let the mainstream fade in the dust. Be there now.